In this video, I'm gonna talk about all of the optimizations I've made and the things I've learned through the first 13 reservations in the Belmonte penthouse, the first Airbnb that I actually own in my name. Welcome to the Belmonte penthouse. Welcome drink. I also I have a host in LA. She's um, I've raised her base price from uh, 200 to 400 I think in the last year and she's been getting a little bit higher proportion of negative reviews four-star reviews is a negative review And so I what the reason is is value value at some point you're gonna charge too much And now you're getting guests whose budgets are higher and they're expecting more so you have to provide more. That kind of makes sense Anyways, I think you guys are smart. You charge more you have to provide more you can do that after the fact, as this host has. Um, I've given her some recommendations that we will go over later uh, about some, some value adds that she can do that she hadn't taken advantage of. And she's, a, she's one of my few full-time managed um, listings. So these are services that I offer on my website that uh, I, if you're part of my management, you get them for free. She, she decided not to do that. Now she's gonna do that because she saw the physical reviews. So what I'm trying to do is stay ahead of that curve and continually optimize and add more things. So what I did is I did, uh, I created a welcome drink. Now this I think is genius. I mentioned this during the live check-in. Now I offer all the guests a welcome drink. I say, uh, when I do the live check-in, which I will get to in a second, I say uh, at the very end, and you, as part of staying here, you have a free welcome drink at Cafe Noir, it's called. It's just about a six minute walk from here and it's the best lounge cafe restaurant in the whole city. It's super good, super well designed, and that's true, super well designed. And so not a single guest has taken this offer, but they all seem to react pretty well to it. They're like, oh, cool. Well, I, know, I guess we're going to know where we're going tonight or something like this. But none of them have actually um, taken me up on it. But uh, if they do, it's a cool thing. It's a cool thing. I had one reservation where it was just two guests, him and his girlfriend, and his parents were in town. And I said, I said uh, if you guys go for that welcome drink, um, your parents are included. Don't worry about it. Just tell them for it's all good. Now, water. If you're outside the U.S., water might be an issue. Guests might be a little skeptical of drinking the water. Now, the water here in Medellin, in Colombia, kind of in total, is drinkable. It is drinkable. But people can still be skeptical, right? So what did I do? I mentioned this to them in the check-in. I mentioned this to them. I have a little loop that I do. When we get to the kitchen, I say, hey, by the way, the water is drinkable here. And sometimes they're, they're surprised. Sometimes they don't make a word. What I've done, I've taken it a step further. I have a link in my digital guidebook where I actually test the water. Two different tests, water tests, here in this apartment, and I record it from this sink. And it, so if the guests are saying, oh, are you sure? I'm not sure about that. I say, well, look, I've been drinking it myself, um, but also I've tested it. I have a link in the digital guidebook that uh, it's a YouTube video, and I test the water here. So if you want to get a little more comfort in that, you don't believe me, I get it, but, but it is definitely drinkable. That's why I don't provide water. However, I do provide... Um, nowadays, I provide a few waters for free. The concierge, my secret weapon. So this concierge, um, I, it, it was kind of a mutual thing that I, I developed it, but what happens is I give my guests a concierge, a full service concierge, anything entertainment related. This is their dedicated local Colombian who speaks fluent English, who has connections in the area. Let's say you want to book a reservation at a high-end restaurant that's very popular that, has a, that doesn't have any tables. This guy will get you a table. At the very least, he'll get you to the front of the wait list. But in addition to that, any guides, anything at all, he'll even accompany you on a night out if you want. And guests really, really like this guy, so much so that they, they bring him out with him the whole weekend. They take him to dinners and whatnot. They really like this guy. He's a, pe he's, a, he's a people person. I'm jealous of him for that. The great thing about this is it's no cost to me. It's no cost to me. The, the, the concierge marks up the services and takes some money that way. But also, because he has a direct connection with these guests, if there's an issue, and I might have a negative review, which I will get to in the very next thing, the guest policy, he actually has a connection with these guests. And he can say, hey guys, um, you know, if you were going to leave a negative, I know there was issues, but honestly, if you need a negative review, it's actually going to hurt me. And since these guys really liked uh, my concierge, 
they're probably not going to leave review. I hope. We'll see. Now, uh, a few guests brought their own concierge. So that's like an extra guest in this house who's not being, who's not pay, being paid for. So I decided, after learning this, I decided to send a special message to these guests introducing my concierge and, and kind of letting them know, this is your concierge, this is who you can use. Now, I had an issue. My first, my biggest issue was about the uh, guest policy issue. Now here, uh, it's 100% of the reservations have been men. And uh, what they, they want to do uh, here is um, they want to have overnight visitors. I want to get into specifics, but the guests here, they want to have overnight visitors and they almost always do. And so I've created a guest visitor policy. I, I allow visitors. That's part of the reason why I can charge so much, but I need to set a limit on it. Now, this is a, this is a topic for all hosts. What my visitor policy is, is first visitor per guest gets one visitor free. The second visitor is 100,000 pesos, that's about 25 bucks, okay? All overnight visitors, including that first visitor, overnight is defined after 5 a.m. All overnight visitors are 100,000, okay? And you can have two visitors per day maximum. No more than that, you gotta, you gotta confirm it with me. And more than two at the same time, you have to confirm it with me. That's now an offense, that's different. Now the problem with this um, visitor policy or how I've been implementing it is that people book this place and they don't, sometimes they don't know each other. And most of the time they don't see the messages and they arrive at different times. So I had a week long booking. Part of my ROI on this place was the, the host, the last host wasn't offering a weekly or monthly discount. And hosts around here, my competition, were offering weekly and monthly discounts. So I was gonna offer a more, I offered a 35% weekly discount and a 65% monthly discount. These guests who just checked out a week ago, they took the weekly discount, 35%. So what I realized is that um, I was thinking if you're here for a week or a month, you might be here like to, you'll be more relaxed. That was not the case. These folks literally had a party every single day. One day they had nine visitors here, nine visitors, and two of the visitors brought a dog. In fact, one, the, the day, day one they brought a dog, I said, hey guys, come on, no dogs. The next day they brought two more dogs. I'm like, man, this is, this is upsetting. So I learned a lot from this case in terms of salvaging a good review and also setting limits on guests. The problem with this is that families are not booking this place. So it's like three guys, a group of guys. So I'm sending messages to only one guest. That guest is not communicating with the other guests, obviously. And then in addition, they usually come, they arrive at different times. So in this particular reservation, we had a week long reservation. I was only communicating with one of the, one of the guests. The guests got here. I actually had something else to do. So I had to leave. My brother was in town and I wanted to show him something. It was his last night. So I had to leave. So I didn't do this check-in. So I don't know what was said, but regardless, we only set it to one of the guests, the, 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 the visitor policy. That guest probably didn't communicate it to the other two guests. And they were also bringing over just simply too many guests, too many visitors. That's good. So the paying guest and a visitor, to get our terminology right. The paying guests were bringing over too many temporary visitors. And so, um, and the porteros, the security guards were telling me, they were telling me, and I implemented a policy. And so the policy was if they don't pay for, um, they have to, upon the second guest, they have to pay 100000 just to enter. After the second guest in the same day. And so the guests didn't know this. The guests didn't know this and they got very upset. They paid because the porteros are great and they didn't let the, the, the visitors in without paying, but they were very upset and this could risk a negative review for, there were three visitors in this house, so it's $75. They paid 2,500 for a week. I'm risking a negative review for 75 bucks. So for me, it was like, all right, should I charge this? Should I not? Do I need to come up? What, what do I need to do to figure this out? So what I did, what I'm going to do is basically Keep the same visitor policy because I want a policy. I don't want it, it cannot be a free for all. I want a policy, I want some significant penalties for bringing over guests, but I won't charge them for bringing over the guests. I will only start charging them for overnight visitors. And I'll do that because if they're an overnight visit, they're using the facilities, they're gonna be cooked breakfast maybe in the morning. And that's just normal, you're, you're paying per night for guests. So if you book for four, but you have five, you actually should pay that additional fee. And on Airbnb, the charge is 75 bucks a night. In person, it's only 25. So, what I'm gonna do with that is I need to set better expectations. I need to make sure that all the guests understand the, the guest policy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a WhatsApp group and all the guests are gonna be in there with the concierge. And there, so I'm gonna specifically say a few things that are extra important and the visitor policy is one of them. That will be TBD. I'll probably do another of these videos in the future. That is TBD at this point. So those guests, so that, that's a story in and of itself. Um, luckily those, the guests didn't cause any damage. There was two missing items, a TV remote and a cable for a Wi-Fi extender, unfortunately. Um, 
but they, they didn't cause any damage. They did want to extend their reservation the last night at 8.30 a.m. on Sunday. They wanted to extend their reservation because they arrived at that time from the night before and they all missed their flights. So I said yes and they were and I said no. So um, anyways, that told me that basically I don't need week-long or, or month-long reservation. This place is very popular. Maybe in the slow season, which this place doesn't really have, maybe in the slow season I can take week or month-long reservations. But here in the busy season, I definitely did not need that week-long reservation in December, nor honestly do I need that 37-day reservation coming up in January. Now, following along with those from the Porteros, the Porteros here, luckily, actually, I have uh, security here. One guy downstairs in the lobby, 24 hours a day, letting people in, checking their IDs, taking pictures, recording notes. That's nice. What I'm going to do is they're going to basically be my emergency contact. I'm going to create little uh, Belmonte penthouse cards with the address here, the neighborhood, and the number to the building, which is available 24 hours a day and the guests can call, um, call them up for any issues. And it'll, and it'll act uh, as more um, marketing as well because hopefully they keep this card with them later on. Now the bar, there's just um, three more things I will cover. The bar, I offer a gentleman's bar and there are alcohol for purchase in this bar. And so um, I love this idea because it's, it's kind of a higher end feature. It does take some extra coordination. So far, I think it's been worth it. I've, uh, you know, I've maybe sold uh, 750 bucks uh, in, in two months with uh, bar services. There's a few things though that I realized. I first realized um, that I have to start getting things that are harder to get, getting bottles that are harder to get. If it's a really common bottle, why are they gonna pay for it here when they can go down to the corner store two blocks away and pay for it there? So I got sake, sake, which is uh, rice wine, Japanese rice wine, basically. I found a place here that can sell it. Um, no guests have bought it yet. But I got that under the premise that I need things that are more unique. I think guests just don't know what it is. What else I started getting, what else I started asking is like, what do guests really want? And it turns out Hennessy they really want. So I'm going to start getting Hennessy, but it turns out it's hard to get Hennessy here. So that's, that's the things I was thinking about. And um, then I started thinking about, well, we provide Coca, uh, Heineken and Corona. Then I started realizing like, well, why Heineken and Corona? Were those tested by the prior hosts? I think probably not. So then I started, okay, now I'm going to provide a few other beers to test it out. And I'm just going to say, you know, beer, a beer. So why, why do I say Corona specifically and Heineken? Just say beer, five bucks a beer. In addition to that, those visitors I was telling you, those visitors are female. So then I started realizing, wait a minute, I should get some things that females want to drink. Because uh, if you have a female over and she wants to drink something, you're going to say yes. <laughs> I got rosé and I got champagne. For these for these visitors i'm also thinking about getting some other more um flavorful drinks like baby now the reason why i'm doing this is simply to sell more sell more why not it's, it's a convenience fee i mark it up by two times the price and i also offered a special edition johnny walker uh, it's called white walker it's like a game of thrones special edition um, bottle there and i'm marking that up a little bit more like i said i charge 2x and what that does is it gives me some flexibility those guests with the hot tub issues, they when they drank some alcohol, I actually gave them, I said, you don't, you won't pay for that. Now they drank the Johnny Walker. It cost me 25 bucks. I have it charged at 50 bucks. So the guests think, oh, cool, I'm getting uh, 50 bucks off. But actually it's only 25. So the, the, you, what you want to do when there's these situations, you want to separate the value. What is the guest think he's getting and what am I paying the difference between that and offer that like an airport pickup. I think for four guests, I'm, the value there is probably much higher than what I'm paying. Now I do do a live check-in and I think I'll just do that. Actually, I'll record a new video and do that. When that video is up, I'll put it, I'll put it up here. Um, and I'll just, I'll talk about in that video why you might want to do a live check-in and I'll actually just go through my live check-in right, right then and here, or right, uh, right, you know, through the video. So stay tuned for that. The last thing I'll cover is branding. So branding, I am branding my website. I'll do a separate video on this, but Branding comes in a few, you only want to brand if you have a space that is better than the average, much better than the average, space that people are going to talk about, space that someone is going to come back to, and even a space that someone famous might want to stay in that will help you with your branding. So the first branding, the first thing you should do is you should take over Google search results for your name. So the Belmont Penthouse, if you type it in Google right now, you will see my YouTube channel, you will see the Airbnb, my website, my Twitter, my Instagram, um, and maybe, maybe a couple more, I'm not sure. Okay, and then after you do that, then you wanna take over search results for more general terms like Penthouse Medellin or Penthouse Poblada. That will take a little bit more effort. Now the website I used is from Boostfully. Mark over at Boostfully is the king of direct bookings. 
and uh, he, I, I'm using his website. It is, it is the fastest website. If you just want to get a website up and running, he has a few different services, some higher end services. I'm using the lowest one because my, my thought was, I just want to get a website up right now, right away. And then I can think about what kind of things I want. What, what do I want my customized website to be? So if you're looking at a direct booking website, I first recommend you read my uh, blog on branding because you got to figure out, are you actually going to get bookings from this website realistically? Because the website does take maintenance and, and it takes work to, to run a website. And if you are, then I recommend you check out Boostfully. And if you do, then I definitely recommend you share your feedback with me. How, what was your feedback uh, with Boostfully? And I think I might have a code for them, to be honest. If I do, I'll put that in the description. Thanks for joining me in this journey. I, I, it, I feel like it's my last step in being a full Airbnb expert now. Now I own my home and I always knew it was going to bring uh, unique challenges. Even though all the experience I have, I knew it was going to bring new learnings and challenges. And sure enough, I have learned a ton this past few months. And I want to share it with you. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope that you will show me that you enjoyed this video with a subscribe and a like here right now. I love the comments too. I hope that I'll see you down there. Until next time, happy hosting.